Hobweb theorem and simple theory of price determination part 2. If you didn't view the first part of this lesson, please follow the link given in the description and then come to this lesson. Well, now the lesson. Already we have seen that a damping oscillation will guide the market to stability. Okay. But the oscillation is not always damping. It may be at times perpetual or exploding. Then market stability will be a dream. Once disturbance is caused, market will never be back to stability. Look at this graph. To begin with, the market is in equilibrium. The equilibrium price is 25 rupees. Equilibrium quantity traded is 500 units of wheat. In one year, due to adverse weather, the farmers bring only 200 units of wheat to the market. This happens in period 1. The demand condition in the market is given by the demand curve DD. Accordingly, the market takes this output at 40 rupees. Attracted by this high price, the farmers produce more and supply 700 units of wheat in period 2. But the buyers who are guided by the demand curve DD buy 700 units of wheat at 10 rupees. The farmers whose behavior is governed by the supply curve SS supply 200 units in period 3 at price 10. Again, the buyers buy this output by paying as high a price of 40 rupees. Price being 40 rupees, farmers produce 700 units in period 4. Look at the oscillation. The price is oscillating between 40 rupees and 10 rupees. Quantity is oscillating between 200 units and 700 units. The oscillation is perpetual with no end. In this case, market stability is not at all possible. Look at this graph. Same graph as you have already seen. The market is in equilibrium to start with. Both buyers and sellers behave in accordance with the long run demand and supply curves. In period 1, the farmers supply only 300 units of wheat due to crop failure. The buyers buy this output at 30 rupees. In period 2, farmers supply 600 units of wheat. Buyers buy it at 10 rupees. In period 3, the farmers produce and sell 200 units of wheat. Buyers buy it at 40 rupees. This higher price makes the producers to produce and bring 800 units of wheat to the market. Look at the oscillations. It is ever widening. Price oscillates from 30 rupees to 10 rupees and from 10 rupees to 40 rupees. It is widening. Similarly, quantity oscillates from 300 units to 600 units, from 600 units to 200 units and from 200 units to 800 units. It also keeps on widening. This kind of oscillation is known as exploding oscillation. In this case also, market equilibrium is an impossibility. Our conclusion is, damping oscillation bring back stability. Perpetual and exploding oscillations will not restore market stability. Well, now let us examine the reasons for different kinds of oscillations and how do they help public authority in designing its market related policy. When the slope of the supply curve is relatively steeper than the demand curve, market disturbance will cause damping oscillations and market equilibrium will be restored automatically. The government need not step into the market to bring back stability. When the absolute slope of the supply curve is equal to the absolute slope of the demand curve, any disequilibrium will cause perpetual oscillations. When the slope of the supply curve is relatively flatter than the demand curve, any disequilibrium will cause exploding oscillations in the market. 
perpetual or exploding oscillations will not re-establish stability in the market. Under such conditions, government must take necessary steps to stabilize the market. Dynamic equilibrium analysis of cobweb model is highly useful in policy making. Our lesson ends here. We shall meet again.